Okay, we are now recording. Um, so this is our first meeting of the DSpace 7 Entities Working Group, which is a follow-up to um, an, an initial DSpace Entities Working Group that occurred um, starting last winter, basically back in November, December of 2017 and kind of went until uh, spring, uh, springtime of this year. Um, so this is the follow-up group for um, for actually taking the efforts of that working group forward and moving them towards DSpace 7 specifically. And to start off this first meeting though, I thought we could do some quick introductions. I think most people may, uh, I see a lot of familiar names. Most people may know one another from other groups here or there, but this gives us an opportunity to just make sure we know who everyone is uh, before we get started with this meeting. So I'd like to go around here and do a quick introduction. You just give your name, uh, the institution you work at, um, anything else you want to um, say that comes to mind with regards to entities, if there's something of major interest to you here. Uh, but I'd ask that we keep it kind of brief since we got a pretty packed agenda this first time around. Um, and I will call out names because I think in Zoom here, pretty much uh, everyone has a different view. Um, so uh, I'm not sure that the order of names here that I see is the same as the one that you see. And if you want, you're welcome to turn on your video today. Um, I'm going to have mine on just to kind of so you can see my face here. Uh, so I'll kick off. Um, I'm Tim Donahue, of course, from DuraSpace, uh, the DSpace tech lead. Um, so I'm going to be the acting chair of this group, uh, trying to keep uh, discussions moving forward. Um, and I'm also going to be bringing things back to, to steering and leadership, although we have several other steering and leadership folks on this call as well. So I'd encourage you to keep me honest on that and also help bring back uh, the, the discussions to our leadership and steering group as they move along. Um, so I'll hand things over. Let's see, uh, Michaela, do you want to introduce your, yourself? Yeah, of course. Thank you, Tim. Um, I'm Michaela Minian. I work for DuraSpace, a group of, of team. Uh, I'm responsible for the international membership and partnership program of DuraSpace. And I'm here to support the activities of, of the group and to have team and the other uh, leaders present in this group to, to bring the issues and share uh, uh, the activities of this group with the governance of this space. Thank you, Michele. Uh, Pascal? Hello, my name is Pascal Becker. I'm running a DSpace service provider called the Library Code. I'm a DSpace committer and I'm also on the DSpace steering and leadership group since July. Um, I was also in the previous working group for the entities, and I'm really looking forward to how we will bring this into DSpace 7. Thank you, Pascal. Uh, Alexander? Hello, my name is Alexander Sulfriam. I'm working for the uh, university library at the Freie Universität Berlin, and we currently use DSpace 6.3, and we are very interested in getting entities. Thank you, Alexander. Um, Andrea? Hello, I'm Andrea Bollini from Italy. I'm the technical leader of the For Science service provider. Uh, I'm also the, the leader of the REST API subgroup for uh, DSpace 7, uh, a long time committer of DSpace and one of the creator of DSpace Chris, that is, uh, as you probably know, uh, one flavor of entities for this space. We like to bring back the experience of this space, Chris, in this group. Thank you, Andrea. Uh, Levin? Hi, I'm Levin, the CEO of Admire. Um, we've created the prototype based on the proposal from the previous entities discussion group. So I'll be presenting that later. Thank you, Levin. Uh, Susanna? Hello, I'm Susanna Mornati. I'm the COO of uh, For Science. As Andrea said before, uh, uh, we are working with the entities and, uh, and this space uh, since uh, some years now. Thank you, Susanna. Uh, Stephen? Stephen Hearn, University of Minnesota. Um, <clears throat> I'm the metadata strategist here, and I have been advising and assisting with the DSpace Institutional Repository and have a long-standing interest in how we manage entities that are not resources in this kind of a system. 
So I'm here as much for curiosity as anything else, but I do have a strong interest. Sounds great. Welcome, Stephen. Uh, Jose? Hello, I'm Jose Carvalho from University of Minho. I'm here um, in the name of the ROCAP project. That is a national initiative in Portugal for managing science, mainly open science. And we have a hosting service with 26 repositories with this space. And our um, uh, important uh, participation in this group is to try to focus what can be done with this space and what can we do with that regarding the entities to integrate with other system of the national science system. Um, and that's it. Thank you, Jose. Uh, Mark? As soon as I find the mute button, uh, I'm Mark Wood from Mayo, Indiana University in the US. Um, yeah, that's, that's about all I've got to say right now. Thank you, Mark. Uh, and last but not least, uh, Paulo? Hi, hi you all. Um, I'm Paulo from uh, FCCN, FCT, um, Foundation for uh, Science and Technology. And we are um, hoping that uh, this entity can, uh, feature can, can um, resolve or, or solve, solve all of our problems. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> Sounds great, Paolo. Yeah, I think we, we hope it solves everybody's problems as well. <laughs> okay, um, so, so uh, let's go ahead and get started here. Thank you for the introductions, everybody, and, and welcome everyone as well. Um, I am going to go through a couple of just sort of uh, introductory things today in terms of talking about um, how this working group came about. Um, and talking through like the scope and deliverables of this working group. So I'm kind of referring to, and I realized I didn't share the, well, I shared the agenda via Slack. So if you are on Slack, you already saw the agenda. I'm gonna share it in the Zoom chat here as well. Um, but part of the, part of mentioning Slack as well is that I would encourage everyone to join us on Slack if you plan to attend these meetings regularly and kind of follow along in these discussions. Um, if you're not already on Slack, I'll put this in the Zoom chat too. We have a Slack signup page on our wiki. Um, and in Slack, there's an entities-wg uh, or an entities working group channel. I think most of you are already in there, but if you have not joined that channel, I'd highly encourage it. That's where I'll, I'll be sending all meeting reminders um, and we may have discussions between meetings, things of that nature. Um, but going back to, um, to the scope and deliverables of this working group, um, I'm going to assume that most of you have probably already had a chance to see our working group um, wiki page, which I'll link in here into Zoom as well. Um, the wiki page has the scope and deliverables, scope and objectives near the top along with the deliverables. Um, the, as I mentioned uh, in introductory here, this working group is a follow-up to an initial DSpace entities working group. Uh, the DSpace Entities Working Group was formed, I believe it was in last November, I don't remember the exact dates uh, of when it happened, but uh, if it happened sometime like last November or December, uh, and worked on basically starting to plan out how can we achieve entities uh, within DSpace in a, in a future release. Um, out of that working group came a series of proposals for how entities might be achievable and a statement um, approving one of the proposals from the DSpace steering group uh, was posted uh, just after open repositories of this year. And that's linked off of that, that wiki page there right near the top. Uh, so per this statement, uh, the, the goal here is to really look at how we can achieve an idea of configurable entities um, in DSpace 7 and do it within, um, within the DSpace 7 data model in a way that's not going to uh, affect the DSpace 7 timeline. So we're really trying to work towards keeping DSpace release timelines on schedule. Uh, what that means is essentially we're looking towards a DSpace 7 beta by the end of this year, uh, by uh, say December, sometime in December, with a final release um, 
of DSpace 7 early next year. So our scope is rather tight in terms of that we want to try and see what we can achieve in DSpace 7. There's a lot of opportunity though to, to push certain features or certain needs off to DSpace 8 if we needed to. Though um, ideally, if we can work quickly and work, um, work collaboratively, uh, we will hope to achieve as much as we possibly can within that DSpace 7 release to at least build the groundwork uh, for this idea of additional entities uh, within DSpace. So, um, so that's kind of the basics of, of where this working group came from. I will note that I gave um, an, a very brief high-level overview of this also at the Open Repositories Conference uh, back in June of this year, uh, where I talked about um, the reasons why we're looking at entities now and why this is uh, much more um, necessary uh, for the future of DSpace. And let me actually, here I'm going to share my screen briefly just to kind of go through those slides. There's only two slides here that I want to show briefly, but let's see how this works with sharing screens. Um, so these are, these are the couple slides that I shared open repositories um, in terms of that we want to be able to achieve configurable entities to allow us to support new types of objects and relationships. This should all be very obvious to all of you in terms of that's why you're here. You want to make DSpace uh, work better for other use cases. Uh, but the real goals here is also to align ourselves much better with the next generation repositories report around identifiers and align ourselves much better with the open air version four um, best practices that are coming out. Um, and that has to do a lot with identifiers as well in terms of allowing us to, to store and maintain different types of identi identifiers, including ORCIDs, um, store more information about people and uh, institutions and the like. Uh, there is inspiration as noted uh, by both uh, by Andrea and his introduction from DSpace Chris here. Uh, Four Science has been doing DSpace Chris for many years um, and we want to take some inspiration there for what they've achieved and really try and make sure that we're all moving together um, in unison uh, with this configurable entities idea. So as noted at open repositories and also as part of that um, that steering group report, uh, the goal here that that steering, that steering was really looking towards was to try and achieve an idea for configurable entities uh, where entities are typed items with defined relationships. So as we all know, items in DSpace have metadata and zero more files. The idea here would be to allow us to, to create different types of items that can store different types of entities. So you could have a person entity, article, project, those can actually have stored relationships. Um, and they even can trigger different sorts of user interface views or behaviors. Uh, and this is a bit of a new idea. The user interface views and behaviors is a little bit more from a DSpace 7 realm um, in terms of the flexibility that, um, that has been enabled from our new DSpace 7 REST API, as well as the new Angular user interface will allow us to, to really build views and sort of behaviors in those views that are more specific to certain types of entities. Um, so this is all kind of the, the vision for what we're trying to achieve and how we want to try and get there. Uh, but this working group is really charged with how do we make this a reality? So how can we bring this down to, to earth and sort of, um, uh, make sure that we're moving in the best direction for DSpace as a whole, as well as, um, as for DSpace 7 specifically. So that's kind of where we're coming from here. Um, I'm going to stop the screen share. Well, actually, let's leave this open here. We'll just look at these, the scope and deliverables together. Let me bump up my Chrome view here and collapse our sidebar. Um, so that's kind of going over the uh, the scope and objectives um, at a at a higher level um, in terms of where we're trying to what we're trying to achieve here. There is much more information on the various links within this wiki page if you want to dig in deeper. If you need a little bit more background, uh, in terms of the deliverables, uh, these deliverables are not necessarily set in stone in terms of how they are worded right now. But I would like to get sort of your approval and Q and A around these right now. A little bit of discussion around these within this initial meeting to make sure we're all on the same page, to make sure we know where we're going. Uh, but these are the the, the high-level goals that we need to sort of achieve to make this a um, an achievable 
task for DSpace 7 and what based on uh, what steering has proposed for all of this. Um, but there's plenty of opportunity here for us to define and tweak these. Um, so the, t the timelines here are kind of loose, but these are kind of timelines that I set in place based on the goal of getting DSpace 7 into beta by December, which really means we would have to move quickly here. Uh, but I want your feedback on whether you think this is achievable, not just in this meeting, but in the upcoming meetings here as we start to dig deeper into what's here so far, what we can build from. Uh, so the starting point here is not necessarily from nothing. Uh, there is an early prototype of configurable entities that uh, the Atmire team um, even alluded to it, and, and we're going to dig into this a little bit starting today and in coming meetings. There's a very early prototype of configurable entities uh, in the DSpace 7 sort of data model and, and within some, sort of the DSpace 7 um, framework. Uh, this prototype, however, is not necessarily um, it's not been approved by anybody. I'll just put it straight out that, that way. Uh, we need, that's part of the, the first goal of this group is this group has this initial opportunity to start to look at this prototype and assess it and see whether we think this is a good direction for DSpace and DSpace 7. Does this seem like a model that fits well with the needs of DSpace, with what we would like to achieve out of entities, uh, with the statement that steering put out? Um, and how well does this prototype align with those needs and goals? If we like the prototype, this could be a quick jump start for us and we can start to build from this and enhance it or restructure it however we need to and start to move that forward rapidly um, in line with DSpace 7 timelines. But if we don't like the prototype for some reason or another, this is also an opportunity that we can either um, adapt parts of it if we want to DSpace and DSpace 7. We can pull the pieces that we like out and start moving forward with those. We also have the opportunity to really, if we wanted to, we could rip it all apart and start from scratch. Obviously that's harder to do within our timelines, but it's another uh, goal that we can move towards if, if we really see that that's the feedback out of this group um, in terms of that early prototyping. We can, we can rip it all apart and start from scratch as needed, but it's really kind of up to this group and up to the analysis that this group does and anyone else who's watching this video later will have the opportunity to also provide that feedback into here so we can assess this prototype and move forward. So after that initial assessment, um, which I hope will happen throughout the September month here. So we're at the very beginning of September. Um, I want to get that done before the end of September, if not before then, dep depending on how quickly we can get to those decision points. Um, after that assessment, that's where we're going to define a roadmap. And this is really based on that assessment. If we like the prototype, our roadmap will be based off that prototype and what we want to achieve and fix and clean up um, in the coming months um, to, to make this achievable. Um, if we don't like the prototype, then this, uh, then this implementation roadmap um, needs to work on uh, what we don't like and how we want to start differently and how we want to build this in differently in terms of trying to align this with DSpace 7 timelines especially. And so this, pro this roadmap specifically is around DSpace 7, around uh, what we think we can achieve in time for DSpace 7, and what we think may need to be pushed off to a DSpace 8 or a later release. So that's kind of um, all baked into that. Um, and the goal there would be to get that implementation roadmap defined and developed sometime in October, preferably you know, by mid-October, but if not by then, by end of October. Uh, then from there, uh, we really would move into an implementation phase where we're going to work towards that roadmap, gather as many developers as we can from all of you here in this meeting, as well as other folks that I know are interested in this work that are not able to attend today, and start to implement uh, entities or as much as we can implement for DSpace 7 per that defined roadmap. And the end goal here is to really create a pull request along with documentation around that pull request and submit that into review, the review process, the normal review process where it would get reviewed by DSpace committers, by the existing DSpace 7 working group and start that process of getting uh, this work into DSpace 7. So the goal for that is to try and get that done by end of November. I know that's really tight, but we just want to get it done as soon as possible and, and keep the DSpace 7 working group in the loop here as well as the committers so we can kind of move that into DSpace 7 as much as we can. And then as sort of a wrap-up phase, 
uh, there's the opportunity for this group to also define or draft up a post DSpace 7 roadmap. So what are the things we don't think can get into DSpace 7 um, and that we would propose that steering and leadership and other groups start to look at after that DSpace 7 release. So once all four of these tasks are done, uh, the goals of this working group are complete, and I would um, then ramp down this working group. There would be no more work to be achieved by this particular working group, and essentially we would actually merge uh, with the DSpace 7 working group as the entity's uh, features would already have a pull request, and we would start to, um, to work towards getting that pull request merged into DSpace 7 and get DSpace 7 released. So that's a lot of me talking. Um, I want to hear questions, comments, uh, feedback uh, from all of you. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen here real quick, um, just because uh, that way I can see if there's any been any textual comments. I can't really see those as easily while I'm screen sharing. Um, but um, does anybody have any comments, questions, thoughts on those objectives? The timelines, which I know are, are quite, um, quite strict and, and quite tight, um, or anything around what we're trying to achieve in this working group. Right now, everybody looks to be muted. So if anyone's trying to talk, I'm not hearing you. I'm not seeing any questions. Wow, so that was crystal clear to everyone. I know a lot of you, some of you were in the, the entities working group before, but I just wanna make sure there's no disagreement around um, where we're starting, where we're going. Okay, um, so if you do have any thoughts that come up after this meeting, uh, I would encourage you to share them via, via Slack, especially Slack will be the main, um, channel for for discussions between meetings for this group we don't have like a group mailing list or anything so um so drop a note in the entities working group channel or something if you do end up having questions around the goals the guidelines um, what our scope is for this group uh, but with that i guess we'll move forward to the next topic on our agenda then um, so next up on the agenda is to start to actually introduce some of the higher level concepts uh, behind the, the early prototype, which is where we're going to begin our assessment. Uh, so I am gonna ask that we try and keep this brief because the, the goal here is really to just sort of give a high level overview of what the documentation has and where you can start to begin commenting on it and reviewing it. We will be doing much deeper dives in future meetings. Uh, but I want to give us a chance to just get that overarching overview and then start to define um, together um, how we want to structure the assessment period here and uh, when we would like to have our next meeting. Uh, but uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and give things over to, to Levin if you want to go ahead. I don't know if you want to share your screen or how you want to start this high level overview, but I'm going to hand it over to you. Thanks, Tim. Yeah, I created a few slides. Um, so I'll start sharing my screen. I will do my very best to stick within the timing as you so perfectly did in your 25 minutes. So if I go over, please let me know. I'm gonna share the presentation here. Okay. So, ooh, that's not, okay, here we go. Can everybody see my screen well? Yes, yep, we can see yeah. it. Yes, yes. Great. So what I'm gonna do, this is the same table of contents roughly as what is in the documentation. Um, I assume everybody's seen the link to the Google document um, that's linked off of the wiki page um, that Tim created with a very detailed documentation um, about uh, the, the prototype. So that has everything, it has links to the code, it has links to the de a demo site that we put up um, and has all of the details and explains everything in, in detail. Um, you can build it yourself. So um, there, is, there are links to the GitHub and everything so you can build DSpace. If you can build DSpace 7, you could use the Docker 
um, and then update the code, et cetera, et cetera. So, but it starts off from the high level specifications that were in the original proposal. Um, so this is again, a link to the original proposal. I'll share the slides in Slack uh, after the presentation. High level specifications were um, one, to avoid hard coding any particular object model. Two, to start from the DSpace item object. Three, to make sure that those items can be typed and relations can be created. And four, the, that the implementation of that data model is configurable. So the implementation is ready, um, the prototype. There, the documentation link is here. Um, the Angular and the REST API code are available on our GitHub. And there is a demo server here where you can click around and see how things work um, in DSpace 7. So configuration of the entity types, I'll just like very quickly go over all of the different sections here of the, the documentation, just to briefly introduce what's in the document so that it makes it a little bit easier for you to read through and to, to check out all of the details. Um, configuration of the entity types and the relations, that's done through an XML. This is an example of a relationship between a publication and a person with a left and a right label and a cardinality. This is the link to that section of the documentation and the XML file to configure the data model can be processed into the database by a script and it will read each relationship in the configuration file. So this is the initialize entities.java class um, where you can see um, how we process that XML file and actually create the entity types and the relationships that are in the entities. At the end, I'll give a few screenshots and a quick uh, demo in terms of slides so that you have an idea of what that means more exactly. Then database storage. So um, the type of the entity is stored in the item table. Um, there are two new tables, one to store the relationship configuration, so one row per relationship type from the XML. So what you saw there, the relation between publication and person will be one row in that table. And then the actual relations for each of the, the publications and persons that are in um, the, the system, you will have one row that stores that relationship between those two specific um, entities. Um, the default DSpace database tables have not been modified. An entity type is just item metadata. That was also quite important to us because we do realize that, um, and that was also in the original proposal, that there will be a lot of people who still just want to use DSpace for what it is today and for its ease of use and simplicity. And so for everyone who has that use case, um, you know, they, they can safely ignore everything around entities if they don't need to. So nothing changes for someone who doesn't want um, to deal with additional entities in their DSpace. So of course, Flyway will create the tables to store the entity type and the relationship configuration. Then the next part is the Java API. So that's also quite limited um, in terms of changes. So the implementation only requires a class to retrieve the relationship schema to identify, so second class, to identify the entity type of the current item. Um, three, to identify which relations can be created for the current items type. Um, and then retrieve all of the current relations to that item. And again, here is the link to that particular section about the Java API with code examples and everything in the document. The REST API that's on top of the Java API has been extended to have entity type, relationship type, and a relationship so that you can access all of those through the REST API. Um, for all those objects, um, there are services that have been created so that you can easily create, retrieve, update, and delete entity types, relationship types, and relationships. And again, the link to that section of the documentation. Angular UI, so that will, um, there's, there are three main components here. One is to display the relations on the entity, uh, on the item pages. So on a particular entity item page, you want to be able to show which relations it has. And that for that, we have an entity type switcher component um, in Angular, and we have an entity type decorator. Custom item pages, to be created based on the entity type. So you want to probably have different 
um, a visual representation for different entities. And in order to do that, um, there's an initial component defined in Angular that's called entity page fields component. Um, this can be extended even further, but that's basically the only section where you know, the source code will need to be modified based on the model. So besides the, um, this, you basically don't have to do any code customization to introduce um, different entities, uh, only if you want to have different displays for different entities. I'll show some examples of those later. And then a third component is virtual metadata. Um, that's another thing that was important is that you don't want to, of course, duplicate metadata. So if you have um, the ORCID of an author and you also want to show that ORCID on an article page, you want to be able to resolve that metadata through the author object rather than having it duplicated in the article um, object. Um, so, and for that, <clears throat> sorry, there is a virtual metadata where you can easily configure that you want to show that ORCID on the metadata of that particular uh, item, an article in that case, um, and to ensure that that metadata is available um, independent of how you retrieve that metadata. So either if you <clears throat> retrieve the metadata of that article through OEI or through REST or any other means, that the metadata is there without duplication. Um, I'll show an example of that as well later on. And then there's configuration of other functionality to support different entities. Um, what we've done so far, but this can be um, fleshed out further and more implementation can be done. What we've done so far is um, to provide a facet for, different ent for the different entities so that in the search you can um, you have a search facet with all the different entities and you can filter for, for a particular entity. Then you have the option to create separate discovery pages with a predefined filter. So let's say you want to create a search that only searches in the person entity. <clears throat> then you can use this to create a separate search page where you only are able to search in, for example, people uh, entities. Another thing that we've already implemented in the prototype is batch import so that you can easily already load uh, data to um, work with the prototype. So you have a batch import for different entity types. Um, the entity type is, sorry, this has to be, is, is part of the metadata, so that's easy to add. That was also you know, one of the high level goals is to make sure that if you want to add support for entities to an existing DSpace functionality that the work should be as minimal as possible. So entity type is part of the metadata, so you can easily add that to your CSV batch import. Um, and we've also modified the batch import to support importing of relations to other entities. And so the prototype that we've created is actually um, into uh, a lot of that has been done through CSV batch import. Then there are two areas which currently have not been um, implemented in the uh, prototype. We do have um, specifications and idea of how we would like to do this in the prototype, but at the moment, submission and workflow has not um, been added to the master branch of DSpace 7, so it's not possible at this moment to implement this. Now for the example, just checking the time briefly. So that was five minutes, that was quick. So I specifically did not use the Chris use case as an example, just to also highlight um, that you can also build other data models. And in the, the demo um, and in the prototype code, you'll find two models. You'll find and this journal um, compound object model, as well as some of the Chris entities. So you can also see how two of those data models can be combined um, in one implementation. So here we have a journal at the top of the hierarchy, two volumes, each volume has some issues, and each issue has a bunch of articles associated with them. So if we then look at the DSpace 7 UI, 
this is an item page and this item represents a journal the environmental and architectural it made it easy for me phenomenology <clears throat> journal with its own metadata an issn and a publisher and a description and then it has two volumes and here you already uh, can see how the metadata of that relationship is being resolved so you see the title of the volumes here if we then click on the 2018 volume this is a volume of a journal again it's an item page with the thumbnail the title the volume the issue date and the description as native metadata and then two relations one that points to the journal that this volume is a part of and one to the issue that exists in this volume then to show the virtual metadata this is the um, rest api uh, endpoint and you see here the properties of environmental and architectural phenomenology volume 29 2018 and you see here two metadata fields that I've um, zoomed in on here in this uh, uh, red box is journal identifier ISSN and journal title. So those are two metadata fields that look like they're part of this uh, volume, but they're actually only stored in um, the, the journal and not in the volume. And they're just being represented here as virtual metadata, but you can't tell the difference. So then diving deeper into the hierarchy here you now have the issue of the volume of the journal so where again here at the top the volume links uh, it links to the volume so it shows which volume that this um, is part of and then here it shows the articles in the volume so there's only one article in this particular volume here again you see the virtual metadata that you are showing the date of the article and the author of that article that's being represented through virtual metadata and then we go down to the article page um, which has a date and could have a thumbnail has a title doesn't have abstract uri or collection but it could have it um, i'm sorry it is in the articles collection and then here you see the author the organizational units and a journal issue. The journal issue is, of course, what we've already seen before. Um, so this is the, the journal issue that this article is part of. But what you see here at the top is the author of this article, which is also being represented as an entity. So this is also a, a separate entity being an author entity that is, has a relationship with an article. And so you can see that the, the um, job title of this person, including spelling error and everything. And you can click on that author and then go to that author's page with an email address, with an ORCID, a birth date, a staff ID, and the relations that this um, author has to other objects in the repository. So this person is related to a number of publications um, a thesis, uh, some articles, a book, with again virtual metadata of the, the, the date of that publication and all of the co-authors. And then projects, which is also an entity um, in this model. So um, there are projects here and there are three projects that this person is related to with virtual metadata of the status of the project, so delayed, completed, or ongoing. So that's how item pages, uh, what item pages look like in the prototype. Um, if you go to the URL that I showed in the beginning, um, sorry, in the beginning of the slides here, demo server, you can click around and see it for yourself um, and see how it works. And then for some of the other functionalities, I just highlighted the search. So here you have the entity type facet. Um, currently in the prototype it just displays like the the raw value of the the entity type but of course it could have a label or um, it has a nicer representation than org unit for example and a nicer name um, so here in the search you now see everything you see a test article test article um, the louvre i think was a project or an org unit i forgot atmire was an org unit 
Um, and so if we then click on journal issue, then it filters it down to only the items that are of type journal issue. Okay, I'm still within time. Work estimates, this was a slide that was included in the original proposal of the things that needed to be done to create um, this generic data model. And you can see that everything here has been done except for the changes to the submission. So that's still a few days of work, but it's not a lot of work if you compare it to the other um, areas. And then we've also estimated for two use cases what the amount of work would have been. So the, a simple Chris use case, this is not a full Chris use case, of course, but a simple Chris use case. Uh, most of that work has been done except for the submission forms for the same reason as above. And the same applies for the journal use case. There was an optional automatic setup of configurations that we are leaving for the end. So first, we would like to see more discussion on the prototype before we um, start implementing the optional components. Thank you, Levin. Um, is that it? Yep. Okay. Thank you. I still yeah. have two minutes left, so if you want, I, I can do. still talk for two minutes. <laughs> Uh, no, that's okay. I, I think we'll, we probably will need those two minutes anyways um, along the way. Um, okay, so thank you for that high level overview. Um, so rather than diving into like Q&A right here, which I think would, would bring us too far into the weeds, um, what I would like to uh, suggest is that um, obviously I think everybody's going to have questions um, on, on both just even that demo and, and the docs themselves. But the documentation already does have public commenting allowed. And I've seen that some people have started to add comments and questions within there, um, myself included and several others already on this, on this call. Uh, but I would ask that you start to, to tr track your questions there so that we can dig more deeply into very specific questions um, in the future meetings. Um, if there's not an appropriate place to, to track the specific question you have based on that demo, then uh, you can also um, capture them inside the, or on the, the, the steering, or not the steering group, <laughs> capture them on our wiki page, is what I'm trying to say, our working group wiki, wiki page, um, and I'll copy them into the, the next meeting's agenda um, so that we'll have them captured there as well. So I just want to give people the opportunity to start to capture questions, write them down, uh, make sure that we are, are answering each of these questions along the way um, and ideally within that document to start with. And as we dive deeper, uh, we can start creating wiki pages or whatever we need to create to, to start to uh, get our minds around um, this prototype and what we like and don't like about it. Uh, does, that, does that make sense to anybody? Is there any, um, any questions about how to give feedback here or start to give feedback? Okay, I missed which you know, document we were going to be writing this in. Uh, the prototype document itself, which is linked off of the agenda, I'll also link it into the Zoom chat here. So there's a wiki doc, or not a wiki doc, a Google doc. <laughs> I can't talk today, it seems. There's a Google doc that Levin kindly uh, wrote here that goes into a ton more detail around what he just presented. Um, so I would propose that that has commenting turned on on it. And there's already been comments added there. So as you go back and look at this, and as you start to dig deeper into this, this particular Google Doc, I would ask that you start to add comments directly into the Google Doc or questions into the Google Doc. Um, and so the next meeting, uh, we could start to actually go through and answer some of those questions together, make sure we get clarity around um, any concerns or, or questions about how this all kind of works or how it's structured. Because um, that could be a good next step here for how we can start to capture that feedback and make sure everybody's concerns are answered. Does that make sense, Mark? And everybody else, I guess? Yes, thank you. Sure. Uh, okay, so, and I'm not hearing anybody else have questions. The next, uh, topic on the agenda was actually around how we want to dig deeper here. Um, so I would like to hear from you if you have thoughts on the best way to assess this prototype. We are um, a semi-big group. I see that we're, let's see, we're currently 12 people in this, in this Zoom chat or Zoom meeting. Um, so 
obviously we could just dive in all together in the next meeting and start um, going through the documents, answering those questions, um, digging deeper in areas that we feel need to be dug, dug deeper into. Um, we can do that sort of structure for our next meeting. Uh, there's also the opportunity where if there's, if not everybody feels you're gonna have um, your, the ability to analyze this in more detail uh, within a week or two, by our next meeting, we could start to split off into like a little subgroup and have a subgroup dig deeper, bring back concerns, questions to the bigger group um, and sort of present them back to this group. That's another way that we could analyze um, this prototype. Um, I'm kind of curious what folks think around how you would like to be involved in this analysis. Would you like to see this discussed in every single meeting for the coming weeks here? Would you like to, to have um, a separate really, really deep dive, getting into the code, installing it, uh, meeting for just a subset that can bring that feedback back? What do you think would work? Tim, I was thinking about this uh, earlier this week and I mean, we've already had a lot of meetings about the concept and about you know the, the, the high level goals. So what I was actually hoping that we could do um, is go over each of the individual um, subsections. So um, the Java API, the storage, I mean, you've made some very relevant comments about how things are stored in the database and it's focused on the detail of the database where, you know, we're talking about which identifier are we using? I've seen Pascal ask questions about for what do we want to use handles and things like that. So I think if we would split this up per subsection and then it will be easier to really focus on the implementation details rather than to like um, get into a, a higher level discussion that talks about, you know, what are entities and what do we want to do with them? Because we've already had, I don't know, eight or so meetings um, about that so that we really focus it on improving the implementation of the prototype because it is a prototype. I think, I mean, it's, it's well-rounded at this moment, but the details um, can use some discussion and some improvement here and there, um, and maybe some expansion, um, especially on the, the Angular side. And that, that seems reasonable to me to do a deep dive because that should allow us the opportunity to give feedback into this as to whether it seems to align well with what people's vision is, um, as well as um, just, you know, whether or not they see a different way of doing things here in certain areas of the prototype. What do others think here? I, I agree with um, the, 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 this um, approach uh, of um, reviewing just uh, uh, sections and uh, achieve the, the full revision to, to start implementing it. Thank you, Paula. Well, Paula, everything I've showed today is already implemented. There is code, there is a demo server. So all that has been implemented um, and it's has been implemented against the DSpace 7 branch. The submission and the workflow are the two main gaps at the moment. Um, but to revise that implementation, yes. And if you split it up in the subsections, we would actually need six meetings if we do you know, one meeting per sub, um, subsection which I think would allow us to get it done relatively on time. Cause I would like, if, if, at, if possible, it would be great if we can stick to the timeline that Tim has, um, has uh, set forth um, so that we can still deliver something in DSpace zone. And I've pasted the, uh, uploaded the PDF in Slack. So everybody who's in the entities working group, uh, Slack group can download the slides. Yeah, and I would actually anticipate we might be able to do it in fewer than six meetings because I think some of these logically go together in terms of the categories. Like I'm thinking the configuration plus the Java API might actually be one meeting if we can make it through both. Um, and, data, and the data model also. Yeah, data model configuration and possibly even Java API could all be one meeting. And then you could go into a meeting on the REST API um, and possibly the Angular's in a separate meeting, I don't know. Um, but but it might be doable in three to four meetings if we kind of match these up with things that seem logically reasonable. 
Um, and I think after the first few meetings, we'll start to get a good sense amongst our group whether or not we feel there's major concerns with the approach or whether we feel it's it's worth trying to, you know, build out the Angular side and the REST API here um, if we start at that lower level um, so that we can figure out what direction we're going in much more rapidly. Others have I thoughts think, on this? Pascal? Think, so first, thank you, Lieben, for all the work at Man you put into this. I think the document, documentation is really helpful, at least for me, to understand the ideas of the implementation. I think it's a good start to discuss it. What I have on my mind is not to discuss how we use the entities, but really to, um, to look into how it's implemented but also some use cases we will have to discuss. So the, the identifiers was already named. I think it's an important part, for example. So um, I think why, if, if, we, if we try to go through the packages that are in the document, we always will hit points. We will have to also look into other, other parts of it. So there are connections between those. Maybe um, it would be possible if, I don't know if it would work, but, but I could imagine that we could start having everybody looking into the document, adding comments there, and then maybe we, we just sh uh, look if we can 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 prioritize the, the, the comments, can put together several questions that, that are coming from from the comments. So working closer on the documents, closer on the on the comments that are coming up, because then we always see which on, on which point we don't have any comments, which which everybody agrees to, and on which point we, we really should cut something. I think that would could be much faster than really going into step by step to the to different parts, always hitting the points where they're connecting each other and so on. Yeah, I think that makes that's good feedback, Pascal. Um, and I would want uh, that's why I'm encouraging folks to add comments immediately, is because I think that will immediately point out the areas that need more discussion. Um, and so it might note which, which areas we need to do that deep dive for an entire meeting and which areas we have general agreement and folks are okay with and we may not need to dive as deeply for an entire meeting but could just touch on it briefly and move along. Um, but thanks for that. Andrea, did you have something you wanted to say? Yes, so thank you for the, the demo. I'm uh, very glad to see some of concept of this place, please. Uh, uh, received in, uh, uh, in the proposal, like the virtual metadata, uh, the different search for different entities uh, are feature that I recognize. Uh, I'm a bit, uh, I need to check what is happening on uh, the comment that I made to the uh, general approach in April, because uh, I'm going to add this comment again to the documentation. Uh, but uh, uh, essentially, I think that we need to have a very deep dive into data model structure uh, because already in our uh, comment of April, uh, we have raised uh, uh, some uh, um, topic for discussion about uh, our coding of uh, uh, the entity relation into the database and uh, some advantage and disadvantage to do that and something that uh, need to be addressed. Uh, what I want to see is uh, say is very similar to what Pascal say. There are a lot of uh, topics that are uh, uh, related to order. So once that we have uh, we agree about the data model, I think that we can go more fastly about how to store the data into the database of the JVPI and so on. But if we are not convinced of the original data model, it don't make sense to talk about how to configure it or how to access it, because I really want to be sure that we are all on the same uh, uh, place for uh, uh, the data model that is the most uh, important part. Okay, yeah, I think that seems reasonable. And I'd encourage you bring your comments forward, Andrea. We didn't keep comments from old documents into this new document. This was sort of a fresh write-up um, because this is a fresh working group as well. Um, so bring forward um, comments on the data model and that could be the place that um, we can start with the next meeting is start to dive into some of those comments and questions around the data model um, and see how far we can get through those comments and then move, uh, move on from there if, if it goes quickly. Um, so that seems like a logical place to start next.
Yes, I also uh, want to ask if, uh, uh, look into the comments, my comment, if you feel that uh, it will be useful to have a very high level presentation about this point, I will be happy to prepare some uh, uh, presentation because in the past, uh, we go very deep about uh, technical detail on some aspect, uh, making things more complex or looking more complex than uh, needed instead then just keep uh, uh, a very high level uh, with slide that make things uh, more easy to understand and more easy to, uh, to accept. Because you know, the, the difficulty are in the details. So if you right. hide it, it's easy. So yeah, so I, I, I'm having trouble responding to it because I don't remember the exact comment back from April, but um, but if it's, yeah, if, if your comment is really a proposal to a slightly different data model, then I would encourage, um, yeah, describing that either in a separate Google Doc or, um, or doing slides, like you said, so that we can better understand um, how, your, um, how your data model differs or uh, your idea differs than what, what Levin and Atmeyer have proposed. Um, because I think that's an important concept. It's important for us to understand understand that rather than dive into the technical details. Did you just yeah, add it? I just it? put uh, the link to the, all the comments. Okay. Uh, both in the Zoom and in the Slack channel. Uh, I think that the most relevant part are, as we now agree that we want to have a simplified data model. So I, I don't propose again to go back to the space crease, to be clear. Uh, right. I'm just trying to, to keep things simple. Uh, if you look to this document, there is a part about uh, uh, recommendation, both at the organization level, uh, how to manage the process, then at the technical level. And I really feel that these are still relevant for the prototype and uh, completely apply to the prototype. So I, I will copy this comment on the relevant section of the prototype documentation as well. I would ask that we update this for the prototype because a lot of this language is still around DSpace Chris and, and trying to um, implement things that align, that are, that, that have the existing DSpace Chris code. Um, so I, I think we should revisit your comments. Andrea, I think they're important comments, but I think we need to um, have a higher level view of this because it's a lot of text and it would be nice if you could actually bring these into slides or some sort of diagram or something that can help us understand the, the salient points, the main points um, that you're concerned around. Okay. Does that make sense? So I, I would ask that we do an updated version. Let's not just link to this old document because I think this, this document is a little outdated now. Not really. I checked just before the, the meeting, but yes, I will copy the relevant part in, uh, in the current document, in the okay. current documentation as comment. Okay. And so we can dive in, we're, we're at time here, but we'll, let's dive into our, on our next meeting. We can talk about this, if you can have that sort of high level um, uh, proposal, Andrea, to what you're talking about here. So we can dive into this and discuss it and see what other, others think. Um, around um, the data model proposals, um, and we can move from there. Okay. Um, and so since we are at time, I do want to quickly see when we can have our, our next meeting. Um, uh, sorry, uh, oh, Tim, I have a yeah. sort of procedural suggestion that uh, we uh, should be able to distinguish comments about uh, uh, how the prototype matches the requirements and comments about uh, how it is done, about the implementation uh, uh, model. So I think that, that there are two different uh, things that should be tackled uh, separately. Um, I think that's, yeah, you're welcome to preface your comments if you have uh, concerns around how it was, how it's actually implemented or if, whether it aligns well, that's perfectly um, fine with letting us know which comments are which. I think that we'll get into those as we do these deep dives. So if we're going into comments into each section, starting with the data model, uh, I think it's gonna be very clear which comments are just asking questions around how things were done in the Atmire proposal versus which ones are more saying that you feel that there's a limitation in how this original prototype was, was implemented. Okay. Um, 
so I, I, I agree with you that there's two types of comments, but I'm not sure that we need to spend a whole lot of time trying to distinguish the two because I think it should be clear through discussion, which is okay, why I'm going to dig into the discussion. Thank you. Um, okay, so next meeting. Um, since most of the folks that are involved with this are in the United States and Europe, um, for the most part, I would propose that we try and keep meetings around this time of day. Um, it could be an hour earlier or an hour later for, for my schedule at least. Uh, much different than that would be uh, difficult uh, for me to chair the meeting, but I, I would like to know what day of the week uh, folks could meet. Um, I, I would like to make this a weekly meeting if possible. I realize though that next week is, there's a German uh, user group meeting. So I know Pascal, that would be difficult for you uh, and possibly for Force Science who might be there. I'm not sure if Atmeyer is gonna be there as well. Uh, but I would like to see if we can, can we meet next week? Do we need to do a two week, uh, a meeting in two weeks? Um, or should I just so do the list? At least five persons on this call right now will be at the user group meeting next week. So you would be half of the okay. group. And I think it's an important meeting to talk about the, the database model. So I would prefer if you could move it to the, to the week afterwards. Okay. So Sorry about that. No, nah, yeah, that's, that's no problem. I know there's, it's, just, it's just the time of year. No, no problem, Pascal. Um, how about this? I will send out a doodle poll uh, to everybody here proposing times for the week of September 17th. I'm going to try and do it earlier in the week just because that tends to work better for me. So maybe Monday, Tuesday, uh, possibly Wednesday. Uh, but I'll send out a doodle poll to everybody here and let's try and get something on the schedule as soon as possible for that week, uh, for two weeks from now. Um, and then the idea from two weeks from now is we will be reviewing the data model. Um, in the meantime, start adding your questions and comments to the Google Doc. Tim, sorry to make your life more complicated. Um, I, I'm on holiday that week, so I won't be able to attend the week of the 17th, so I apologize. Um, but it's been planned for quite some time. I haven't had any holiday this summer, so. Oh, you deserve your holiday. Um, wow. And uh, what I was just thinking, wouldn't it make more sense to just do four doodle polls um, or one big doodle poll and just pick four meetings because we basically are going to meet four times, right? Between now and let's say mid-October um, at latest. Um, and then just yes. see what works best. Okay. Yeah, I can do that. I, I don't want to keep you all on here. I'll send out a, a massive doodle poll <laughs> and we'll, we'll try and at least get the next two meetings scheduled. I don't know if we'll be able to get the next four, but let's try and get the next two on the calendar um, and, and we'll see how this works out. Um, yeah, so just want to, to add that uh, I'll also be at the uh, DSpace user group meeting in Germany and Andrea also, and, uh, and Michele, I think, uh, will also be there. So next week yep. there will be four of us missing. And uh, uh, yeah, the, the other suggestion is that uh, we could, if we could use the same uh, day as the developers meeting, uh, maybe one hour before the developers meeting, uh, then uh, it would be better not to uh, occupy uh, all the afternoons for the space meetings. You know. Okay, you're talking about the DSpace 7 developer meeting? Yes, so the developer meeting and uh, um, uh, yeah, for the other that. working groups. Okay, yeah, I'll look at that and see if we can make that work. But I'll, I'll send out a doodle poll to all of you and we'll get this on uh, the next couple of meetings on the schedule. Yeah, okay, thanks. Okay. Is the, the German DSpace user group, is that going on the whole week next week? I thought it was only like Thursday, Friday, if I remember correctly. Exactly, Thursday and Friday. So we could think about a meeting on Wednesday. I think Michele will be in the airplane already, but everybody else, Alexander, me for sure will be available. On, on, oh, we're not traveling on, on, on Wednesday. I'll be flying on Wednesday. When you're flying, yeah. So maybe Tuesday, same time as this week. Um, might work. Yeah, Tuesday would be okay. Me. Yes. Could work. Okay. Okay. For us. My calendar before I actually say that out loud. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah, Tuesday would work for me as well. The eleventh. Okay. Let's do Tuesday the eleventh at this same time, and then I'll get a doodle poll for the next meeting after that. <laughs> Does okay. that sound good? Okay, thank you all. Um, sorry to keep you long here. Our next meeting will be next Tuesday, the 11th. At this same time, we'll start to dig into the data model, start adding comments to the Google Doc. And thank you all very much. I'll put up the recording right after this meeting. Well, thank you. Thank you, Dean.
Bye, Thanks. everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Goodbye.